Hello, my name is Muhammad Kamal, a freelancer of FXTD. Uh, as everyone know, uh, tree simulation one of the few FX or challenging tasks. So today, I want to explain uh, various and different uh, techniques and efficient workflow for simulating trees inside Houdini. I will I will build two setup. One of them is using uh, Filon, another one using Wasolder with the same concept. All of them. Uh, I started this uh, project, I have a land for this project. Uh, I, wa I was working on this uh, in a very short uh, movie, so I want to simulate the trees, so that's why I'm starting to uh, build uh, tree rigs. So before I start to do any FX work, I have um, a good practice to search for good references, uh, to have a better idea of the FX that I want to do. So first, first of all, here before doing, uh, for going to the initial idea, I've got this reference, and actually it's really, it's really good reference. As everyone see, you can catch lots of details. Maybe it's look these details it's look intuitive, but it's really valuable. Like everyone see here, you have you have a different trees, and every tree type is dif behaving differently, and like. Some of the trees bend, bend more, some trees stiffer, some trees broken by, uh, by high forests. And we can see how turbulent movement of the airflow and we can catch lots of details from it. And the most interesting part is uh, every tree have a different elements or different components or different hierarchy, like trunk branches and lots of small branches and twigs and, and, and as well leaves. And all of them is behaving differently, like some of them is stiffer than others, like trunk is stiffer than branches, and branches is stiffer than leaves. And all of it, so so that's 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 kind of information they got from these references really, really uh, valuable. So I recommend everyone do an ethics to such session for a good reference and start to catch lots of details before building setup. This will be helpful. We will find that in the next slides. So the fundamental parts of my of my setup is just to um, using velocity field and by understanding the wind impact on the trees. So I will use a velocity field uh, produced or uh, as a result from virus simulation for advecting trunk and as well branches and as well leaves. So th this 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 is the main uh, concept that I have here uh, in my presentation. So before I start, I found uh, found tree, I found speed tree, one of the good, a really, a really uh, amazing tool for modeling trees. You can model trees as, as well using Houdini, but uh, I've used speed tree. So speed tree is uh, it's really a nice tool and it's give you uh, different or separate group primitives like trunk, branches, twigs, leaves, and spine. And spine is like a skeleton, and, and will the most important elements. And so the, all of my presentation will talk about spine and how we can prepare it for a simulation. So, and spine will be simulated by wire solver or by vellum, and then will be formed trunk, branches, twigs, leaves by this skeleton. So let's start. For importing for importing uh, these um, data from speed tree to Houdini, I found I found I should have a so-called library and a connection between speed tree and Houdini. So I use Python for that. So I used Python for importing alembic trees and fix errors and and applying materials and using different render engines and instancing for only for only one for just the one. Python tool, I use by QT for that. It's just one click and will give you uh, three Alembic files and will give you a uh, really clean group of primitives and give you um, all the uh, materials that correspond to the which render engine that you selected before. So this is the, so this is the, uh, this is the really, really cool things for killing the repetitive task. Uh, so after that, I will see. Uh, I will start to investigate the search for which, uh, what kind of data that came from 
what come what kind of data that came from uh speech tree so i found this data came from speech tree skeleton as i said before uh branches and the uh, trunk and all hierarchies and we have as well here uh twigs or um uh, leaves so um so this is the data that came that came from speech tree so this is the the only part that we concern about is skeleton um it's question about more <laughs> So skeleton is just um, uh, simple curves, uh, sim simple curves and some simple lines. We can call it. So we should just prepare it for simulation. And as I said before, we deal with different hierarchy. On every hierarchy, it have a different material property. It have different behavior. So trunk as well. If for example, it have um, a stiff a value more than branches. So that's that's the, the the main idea I've got from a uh, teacher's name is Andrew Lloyd. So he's a really great teacher. So this is the main uh, concept. Let's start to dive into the de more details about it. So you should um I should like build um a procedural setup for splitting hierarchy. If I have lots of hierarchy like branches and sub branches and, and more twigs and all these kind of things, I should split in them. So for simulation later, so I have a uh, uh, wire object for this one or vellum object for this one or vellum simulation for this one and vellum simulation for this one. But for wire or wire simulation, I need a wire object for this one and wire object for this one. And every one of them is have a different behavior. It's dependent on the tree type. So for a trunk, for a trunk we have um, a stiffer that value than, than the branches, I'm sorry. So that's uh, that's the main uh, the, main, the main idea, just to make a split those hierarchy. On the left side, they have um, they just using connectivity swap, and just to give every primitive a unique ID, and I will transfer these unique identifications from um, from this uh, mesh to the the skeleton. And this will help me a lot. Uh, in the next slides, I will show you something. So the next things I found is some errors here to connect this hierarchy because I found speed trees give you some bad primitive skeletons here. So I found using text and just follow loop all the branches. And then uh, for zero, uh, zero point here, start to look at the nearest point and start to snapping this point to the, to the nearest one. So that's that's the main uh, the main idea, the main uh, the first fix problems, and we uh, this is one of the the solution. Another one just building constraints for our simulation. So we should build the constraints because as I said before, this one would be a distinct wire, wire object, and this one is would be another wire object, and we should have an primitives for constraining those two elements. I will I will I will use um, a wire glue constraint for constraining those uh, for connecting those to hierarchy and this will give me a better interaction between them so for the next uh, the next uh, modification we need just to give a better width value for skeleton so as I said before we have a branch ID or we have a connectivity ID attributes for branches and skeleton with the same value so for every skeleton value, skeleton primitives, we have a corresponding uh, uh, mesh for it. So I start to uh, to find the distance between the point position of the for the spline of the skeleton and and distance between them and the distance between the spine and the the closest point of the mesh. That's really useful. And another thing is you should take into account that width attribute should you should it shouldn't be a zero value because if it's zero values it will cause some problems in collision and in when, when some force is applied to the wire objects. So here with simulation stage as a lovely stage, we have uh, two objects. One of them is wire object uh, well, two wire objects, I'm sorry. So those two wire objects, as I said before, this is techniques. So it's representing representing two hierarchy. So every hierarchy have different material property. We'll set this one right now. So for next, now we have different material property, as I said before, like a different parameters. 
And this is artistic controls like linear spring constants, as you see here. It's just uh, for controlling how the trees will behave. Some of the trees more uh, resisting the stretching. Uh, all trees resist the stretching, but some we see about bending. Some stay bending more. Some trees more stiffer than other. So, and every hierarchies have different have different um, have different material properties. Have different materials. Um, have different elasticity as well. So this is a purely artistic controls for uh, for doing tree simulation. So after that, I will go for constraining. I will go for constraining um, uh, two objects or three objects, how, how much objects they have. And this is using wide blue constraint. As I said before, we have uh, primitives and we can use this primitives point, a constraint primitive points for as a source point for level one and a goal point for uh, for goal objects, level two. So this is really useful tools, are useful um, uh, constraints operations. You can find in help cards, within help card, you can find lots of details about this um, constraint type. It's really, really useful. I use, it, I use it for uh, t technical uh, tentacles, animation, procedural animation for attaching objects to the to the rigid body objects with uh, wire objects and this have lots of features you can get from this wire object. One of them is now we're using it inside Houdini for tree simulation to connect to different hierarchy. So after that, the, we go to the, the most important uh, um, uh, fundamental part of our presentation is just um, using velocity field. <clears throat> I've just used multi-solver and I've used a soft solver for that. Uh, the sub solver and side sub solver are just object matched uh, velocity field. You can build your velocity field, you can use volume uh, like Mario simulation velocity field, and then we can sample this velocity field by volume sample. And um, you can add, uh, like can add um, pass this value to the target velocity, and you can uh, multiply or scale this velocity, or you can use drag value for uh, like a dragon uh, strong wind or something like that. So <clears throat> this is the main, <clears throat> this is the main, uh, the main idea, just using velocity field, uh, our pilot simulation for advicting uh, trees or for moving or for passing all this velocity, velocity data to the <laughs> target velocity, <clears throat> sorry. So after that, we will see the result that we got from this from this rig. As you see here, we have we have a, a simple shot. I uh, did the simulation on shading for it, and my friends he did uh, Salah Hussain. He's a really great uh, artist. He did um, a tree. Uh, he did um, a layout and environment for this one and fog and final render. So this is really really cool uh, presentation. Really cool, <clears throat> really, really cool um, presentation or really cool presentation of how of the outcome of the tree rig. Uh, so after that, we want to go to the um, vellum side and how you can build a tree rig using vellum. So interesting technique using vellum. So using vellum, I'm trying to simulate the trunk as a separate simulation and then using the result of this simulation to move or for animating the next hierarchy and next hierarchy for the next hierarchy and so on. So we'll see uh, this technique, how we can use that. <clears throat> so here we have uh, a simulation for the main trunk. We add uh, more constraint iterations and would collision, colliding with symbol sphere. Adjust the symbol. And as you see here, Vellum Solver can give you an orient attribute, and orient attribute is really, really important attributes. We can use this orient attribute for moving or for animating uh, next hierarchy. I will see here by transformation by pieces. Here. As you see here. And then we use a film uh, simulation for level two. For pinpoints, I've just for loop for all primitives. 
and using curve attribute to curve attribute, curve view, I guess, if I'm, if I don't forget that, if I remember that. So this is the next simulation, next pass of the simulation. If you have more hierarchy, you can use the same technique and the same method for that. <clears throat> So nice, and we can use, uh, I will discuss or talk about the deformation uh, method after minutes. Uh, there's some uh, bad primitives here that doesn't have, you can't capture it, you can remove it after sim, and give, can give more weight here. So that's a um, simple kind of setup. So let's see the result of the um, simulation. I've got some cool result from it. So this is one of the collision, uh, collision parameters, as everyone see here. It's look nice, it's not bad. And for, for our leaves, you can use a VELOM simulation as well. So this is one of them, so another one. We just um, character interacting with trees. Oh my God, he's, he's strong enough to move it. So this is one of the, the Vellum implementation. It's very fast and collision is local promising. And this is one of the coolest implementation I've did before, for two days ago. Um, so that's really, really interesting. So now we'll go for deformation and leaves. So here the deformation side. I've used a wild caption when I deform, uh, but the technique is to give every primitives a unique normal value and just explode the view. Did like a like moving all these objects apart from each other. So for example, the the trunks would be away from those elements and every elements would be away from each other because if I'm using wire capture right now it will uh, cause some interleaving or some stretching or some bad deformation so that's why I'm using this method let's see how how we, how we can do that we have a branch ID with the same the same branch ID for both meshes and skeleton and we after that do a random value so this random for every primitives and then we start to you transfer this, no, promote this uh, normal value from primitive to point, and then we start to move it in the space, just offset it, offset. And then we, as, we use a capture technique. Like we use the same uh, method for the mesh with the same offset value. And then we use a wire deform value and then we just uh, reverse reverse the, the position to the origin to the original position it's really cool it's not bad so this is the idea behind the deformation uh, now we go for um, for the next one so the next one must be the animated animated uh, leaves so for animated leaves I found there's a um, there's, there's a, a different techniques. So this is one of the simplest one. It's just to go for for loop for all the leaves primitives and add center add the point in the center of each leaf primitives, and then start to animate it or start to deform those points by the animated or simulated tree tree skeleton or tree uh, tree result simulation simulation result, and that's it. So this is one. This one for for scattering or for giving a point attribute in the middle of every primitives. And here, you just I use a point deform, and then use, I use back to primitive for each primitive for each uh, leave primitives and start to move it. And you can as well use uh, Vellum simulation for simulating leaves as well. So it's not it's not a hard thing. It's just a simple thing. So this is the, the main uh, thoughts about tree simulation inside Houdini. I hope this was useful. Um, 
for everyone. I'll give a good and um, better understanding for everyone. So I did as well some cool uh, R and D uh, using those uh, those methods. So this one one of them. So just a small interaction. Uh, as you see here, this give you a cool cool presentation. As you see here. This strong impact, and here we have a fire simulation. And with the trees, I use a velocity for moving for affecting this fire. And it's really, really cool. So I hope this uh, this presentation helped everyone want to simulate trees inside Houdini. So after that, thank you. Uh, Thank you for everyone. Uh, this is my account. You can catch me here. You can find, find my latest artworks here. So thank everybody. And I hope everyone uh, find this uh, presentation is useful. So bye.